This meeting is recorded. Hello, everybody. Welcome. We'll just give a few more seconds for folks to finish coming on in and connecting to their audio. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It looks like you can hear every are... conversation here. Yeah. All right. Welcome, everybody. Um, so welcome. Thanks so much for joining us today to hear more about CFMA's peer group program. For those of you who don't know me, I am Kathy Wassner. I am CFMA's VP of Member Services. Uh, joining me today are going to be two uh, peer group facilitators, John Zeiler from Crow and um, Dan Gaston from Forvis, as well as hopefully two of our peer group members. Last I looked, one of them hadn't, hadn't joined us yet, um, but if Steve Altabello is here and hopefully Christina Trabata joins us as well. Um, this session is intended to provide you details on the program. Um, it's a forum for you to ask questions of CFMA staff. But in addition to, I'm here, um, Becky Reitzel is also here from CFMA staff. She was having uh, video issues, so her camera's off, but we're the, we're the two staff folks who handle the peer program. So this is a, a meant to be interactive. If you have any questions for any of our staff, any of our facilitators, uh, any of the um, peer group members, this is a, you know the place to ask those. So as we go through, feel free to unmute and ask questions as you feel, feel um, as they come up, or we will have a question and answer period at the end. Um, so the peer group program uh, is an annual program. It runs on the CFMA year, which is April 1st through March 31st. So the application is currently open. The application will remain open until February 10th. So if you're thinking about joining, um, you know, that is your deadline. If you have any follow-up questions after hearing more information here, please reach out. But that, is, that will be our deadline at that point where we'll start making our matches. Um, if you do submit an application, when you first submit it, you won't get a response. We use SurveyMonkey for that. So you won't get a response um, until we start going through them in February. So if, you know, don't fret if you've submitted something and haven't heard back we will get back in touch with everyone no later than February 24th. It does take us a while to weed through all of the applications. We then will begin our matching process. So we match companies based on um, a whole bunch of criteria. Um, we kind of start with revenue size. We look at business type. So we you know, may have some groups that are just subcontractors. We have one group that's just a heavy highway group. Um, so you know, it could be on business type. We look at you know, union, non-union. We sometimes look at ERPs. Are you an ESOP? So, you know, some of those are all um, parts of, of matching. We want to make sure that you have, you're in, truly in a group of your peers. Um, once we start getting, you know, folks matched, it's really important to us that we do not have any competitor conflicts. So the matching process does sometimes take a bit and take a few rounds. We want to make sure that you're not with, you know, obviously not with a competitor. You don't want to be sharing your information. So your groups are primarily, you know, they're not going to be regional. They're usually folks all around the country uh, because again, that's, the, one of the most important things in a peer group is making sure that you have no competitor conflicts. So as we as we match, you'll get an email from either Becky or I with the first round saying you know that we've identified this as a possible peer group. We will let you know what companies are in that peer group, where they're located, and kind of what type of business they're in. And just so you can take a look and see if anyone looks like they might be a, a conflict for, um, for you. We want to make sure, again, no competitor conflicts at all. You may be slotted into a group that's an existing group, um, you may be slotted into a brand new group, depending on where we have where we have spots. Um, the, this is, I think, the seventh year of the peer group program, so we've been going on for you know quite a while, and uh, you know it's it's again it's, it's a great program to get together and, and chat with your peers. Uh, we hope to have all of the matches for next year finalized no later than March seventeenth. So a little bit about if you did fill out an application or plan to, we, uh, one of the questions we ask is, do you want to meet, you know, one in-person meeting or two in-person meetings, it's two different types of groups. Um, some groups meet obviously one time in person, some meet two time in person. And then in between that, there are um, typically Zoom calls, video calls, where you get together with, with your group. Each group does those a little different. Some only meet every other month on Zoom calls. Some will meet every month. Uh, that's really up to the group. And then in terms of in-person meetings as well, um, once the group is formed, and hopefully in April or early in, in the CFMA in the CFMA peer group year, your facilitator will ask, you know, start polling for um, good in-person meeting times to get those on the books pretty far in advance. So um, all of those are really up to each group. There's no specific timing on those. It, again, it's it's a group to group decision. So um, you know, if, if you're joining an existing group, say, and they already meet Wednesdays at 1 p.m. and that doesn't work for you, hopefully, you know. 
upfront let that facilitator know and they should be repolling everyone at the beginning of each year. Um, the cost to join the CFMA peer group for, uh, program is, is relatively inexpensive as peer groups go. Uh, for groups that I meet once in person, it is $850 a year. Groups that meet twice in person, it is $1,100 a year. That um, fee covers facilitation. So CFMA does CFMA's goal every year is to break even on this program. It's not something we make money on. Um, we do some of the administrative back end stuff and then we turn over to our facilitators. But um, again, hopefully all, we, we break even all of the money that we charge goes towards uh, our facilitation. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to our facilitators to talk. So uh, John, take it away. Hi everybody, my name is uh, John Zeiler. I'm in my second year working with the peer groups. Um, I, I helped lead up the construction practice for Crow on a firm-wide basis, but also here in Illinois, I'm based out of Chicago. Um, we have eight different peer groups in our, in our within that Crow works on. Um, all you know, eight to ten uh, groups or companies that we work with, right? So, so we've you know, the first year we we learned a lot. The second year we're implementing a lot of the things that we learned and so on. So, so yeah, so it's uh, it's we our groups are it, our, our groups have been pretty successful so far. You know, I mean, just just like Dan will t talk about his as well. You know, it's um. It, I've got actually gotten more out of it than I thought I was gonna. I thought it was really gonna be me having to think well, every month how much I have to get up and just present to them for for a whole hour, right? Which once I realized and kind of coached or facilitated the group to not have to do that, they they became <laughs> they learn a lot more from each other than they do for me. Let's put it that way, you know. So so I was able to get them going in the right direction, and we meet once a, once a month, just like she said, and like Kathy said, and we. We set the topics, right? You know, so we try in the first meeting, we lay out, you know, just kind of brainstorm about what topics would be good for the rest of the year. And we kind of just got to have an inventory of all those different topics that they come up with. And we'll, we'll interject and say, here's some other things we talked about last year. Here's what other peer groups are doing, just so that in case they're not thinking of certain things. And then, uh, then we'll kind of say, okay, which one do you want to focus on next month? Right. And that's how we kind of, um, get the topics each and every time because it's something that they select and ideally we don't, we don't set it in stone all the way through because it because issues evolve right you know so we're always kind of looking for making sure we're timely with what we're talking about as well you know at the end of the year we talk about more tax and year-end planning you know the beginning of the year they'll also talk about the compensation type related stuff what are people doing with compensation for field staff um you know executive level all that kind of stuff then and just make sure it's done at a timely place where, you know, some of the firms, you know, they do annual increases in June. So we've made it timed right to that, you know. So anyway, it's been really good. You know, the other the other piece that I will advocate is, you know, Kathy mentioned that some groups get together once or twice a year. Um, <clears throat> definitely, definitely worth getting together in person. Um, you really get to know the people that you're part of the peer group with. I mean, you guys, we've all been doing video calls long enough now for the past three years to realize you only get to know somebody so much in, in these calls, right? I mean, it's everyone has a natural tendency to maybe multitask anyway, you know, and it just pulls people in and, and just really get to know people on a personal level, but know a little bit more about so, them on a professional level as well. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if it's not the gun yet. So, I don't know. so there you go, Walter. Thanks. <laughs> um, I, I guess I'll pause there for just a minute and just does anybody we can ask questions during the session right Kathy or absolutely yeah okay no and then, or maybe maybe I'll let Dan go first too and then let him introduce himself and then talk a little bit about it as well and then then we can open it up for some questions and so on so thanks John I'm Dan Gaston I'm a audit partner with Forbes uh, based out of Kansas City I've been doing the peer groups now for five years I think we've been doing them for seven I do three groups. I think our four of us does 23 or 22 groups. Um, and to echo a lot of the things that John said, um, you know, it's it's almost like group therapy for a lot of the members because they're kind of in a lot of their organizations, they're kind of on their own island. And so it's like a lot of my members uh, that I interact with really enjoy the fact that. You know, we might not solve all the problems, but at least they know that they're not the only ones with those problems or struggles. Um, and it's a great way just to 
to bounce ideas off of people. Um, once the groups kind of get formed and you know you get to know each other pretty well during the the in-person on-site meetings, um, it's been neat to see all of the activity that just flows through emails on a, on a regular basis between the peer group members as far as, hey, I'm looking at this or I'm dealing with this issue. Have, has anyone else seen this? Um, so it's it's really with a lot of my groups have become kind of an ongoing, like they don't wait for the, the next monthly call to throw something out there. And as my job as a facilitator is to help set the agenda, help identify topics. Um, but I always tell my group members it's their group. So, you know, if we had decided, you know, a month ago that this upcoming session, we're going to talk about AR or HR issues, maybe compensation, those types of things. And we get onto the call and the group really wants to talk about insurance renewals. We'll, we'll pivot and talk about whatever the group wants to talk about. All right, thank you, John and Dan. So now I'm going to have uh, ask two of our peer group members to uh, chat with the group. So Steve Altabello and Christina Trovada are here. So take it away, Steve. Yeah, appreciate it, Kathy. And uh, thanks for inviting me to, uh, to talk to everybody. Uh, Steve Altabello, I'm a chief financial officer out of a um, uh, Schilling Construction Company out of Manhattan, Kansas. Um, I've been in peer group program since the well, uh, come back for me now. inception yeah, in the office. Peter, Peter, yeah, thank you. Um, so I've been in since we started. Um, it's I, I can't recommend the program more to anybody. Um, the face-to-face -face meetings, as as John and um, alluded to, are are they're they're pivotal pivot pivotal in the success of the groups because you get together. Not only um, do you get to learn more from each other in the setting of a boardroom, whatever it may be um beyond like a one hour facetime call you're also going to dinner uh you're having lunch with each other there's a lot of small conversations that come out of all that whether it's um small business questions to personal life to a variety of things that that come out of all that uh and then when you leave from those meetings and come back you know, those those phone calls or video calls are, are 10 times more productive uh, and everybody usually look, you know, goes to the next year looking forward just to getting together again. I've been, there's about, in my peer group, we've got about six people that have been together pretty much since the start. Um, uh, I think of a lot of them as, as, as really good friends now. Uh, you know, there's no shame for us to email out something, make a request to somebody, whatever it may be. I mean, I even had one of them step in as a reference for me when I was, when we were applying for our insurance captive. Um, so there's a, um, a variety of benefits that come out of it uh, outside of just like, hey, how do you do your accounting? You know, it's 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 10 times more than that. You know, the, the range of topics come from HR down all the way through taxes to succession planning. Um, you know, when when the pandemic hit, you know, how are you handling, you know, things within office, out of office, PPP, employee retention credits, you know, all that kind of stuff that the that COVID-19 threw upon us having people to bounce ideas off of uh, and, and and somewhat commiserate with, as Dan was kind of referring to, uh, you know, the, the value is way beyond what it costs to be in the program. And I think mean, Kathy even kind of said, you know, it's it's very inexpensive compared to uh, peer group programs that are put on by, um, you know, some of these bigger consulting firms that, that are out there. So, um, I'm happy to take questions, but I know Christine is going to talk a little bit, uh, so I'm going to I'm going to go on mute and wait to, uh, for any questions down the road. Thanks. Hi, I'm Christina Trabada. I'm the chief financial officer for uh, Thornton Construction down in Miami, where GC. Uh, I've been in the program for two years now, and like John and Steve mentioned, uh, this is group therapy for me. I can't recommend it enough. It's the cheapest therapy you're gonna get because it's not just therapy, but it's therapy targeted to construction financial professionals. This is the, the forum where we get to talk to each other in a, in a safe environment about everything and anything that touches our, our work and sometimes also our personal lives. If we've, you know, I've been there only two years and we've bonded 
pretty deeply. And I know in my group, my group is number five. So it, you, it's been around a long, long time. And some of our members have been around a long, long time. And even though I came in much later, they welcomed me with open arms. So you, it doesn't matter who you join, they're gonna still welcome you and, and make you, you know, part of a group, talk about all the subjects that affect your, your work, get ideas, troubleshoot, but also have somebody listening to you when you wanna vent. Sometimes you don't want to talk about a particular subject. You just want to talk about a situation that happened to you or, you know, vent about, you know, people, <laughs> buses or whatever. And you do it in a safe way. And you got people listening and giving you ideas or just saying, yeah, I know what you mean. And you kind of, you see, you're not alone. Just like I, I believe John said, you feel like you're in an island when you're a CFM, that nobody speaks your language. All the operations people say, you know, their stuff, but you speak in a different language. They don't understand you. The peer group people do. So I, I can't recommend it enough. All right, thank you, Christina and Steve. So now comes the question and answer period. Does anybody have any questions for our facilitators, for our peer group members, for you know Becky and I as the staff at CFMA? Are there any questions for us? Do we need to raise our hand? <laughs> no, no, you're, there you go. Go ahead, Deb. You might have said it, but I might have missed it. Um, how many people average or in? A group? Oh, you know, I don't think I did say that and I meant to. Uh, we strive to have about 10 in a group because 10 is kind of the, the magic number. It's not too many, it's not too few. You know, you will get a call where one or two people can't come. So you don't want it to be too small, but you don't want to get too big. So 10 is our, our magic number. The 10 is what we strive for. Thank you. I'm sure you covered this. I jumped on a little late, but what is the deadline to, to request the group? Yeah, the application is open until February 10th. So you still have a few weeks. You had mentioned that some groups meet in person once or twice. Mm -hmm. How, but is that just an in person? And if it is that for the whole year or, or is there more every month or how many times total in a year do, do the peer groups meet? <laughs> So that varies group to group. The in-persons are kind of the, the, the main piece. And then the groups decide, do they want to meet monthly again via Zoom? Um, or is it every other month? Is it every six weeks? So it's really up to the groups to decide. So I think that varies a bit group to group. I mean, those of you that are facilitators and our peer group members, how, how many times a year total does your groups yeah, tend to meet? Yeah, like, Kathy, our, our group meets, uh, we, we do monthly Zoom calls. And then mm -hmm. we have one face-to-face -face meeting a year. Same with me. We we mean monthly via Zoom and one face-to-face -face meeting is usually uh, a day and a half. So one day for travel, one full day together, then half a day, and then we travel back. Yeah, I'd say most of my groups are monthly calls and then one, one or two in-person meetings. I do have one group that does two in-person meetings and they just do a quarterly call. So question on the travel, like, would you be grouped with people in your state or in your area, or is it just all over? It's typically all over because we want the, the main criteria is that you do not have any um, competitor conflicts. So it's, you know, you're most like, you're least likely to have competitors outside of your, um, your close geographic area. Uh, it's up to the groups to decide where to meet in person. Um, you know, some, I know some have met at, you know, one of the facilitators offices or some have met decide to do a hotel or something like that. Um, the one thing I should mention, the peer group program fee covers facilitation. It does not cover travel costs for your in-person meetings because then again, those are going to vary. It may end up being in a city where you are. So um, so yeah, your, 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 your peer group members will be from all over. I have another question. These are um, not then member facilitated. Is that right? So they're, they're not. 
Okay. Yeah. So professionally but, facilitated. Okay. But that, that in a perfect world, the facilitator's not doing an awful lot, right? You know, if, if, if it's really, really flowing, you don't have to really get too involved and fill in the, fill in the, the dead spaces, right? You know, so, um, and I, then, then in full fairness, you know, there's some months where it does do that and just flows in, you know, because it's a topic that everyone has that's interested in. And there's other months where it's a little more clunky sometimes, you know, because the, the topics weren't good. Then we just kind of shift it. Then we go to a different topic and then it starts flowing again, you know? So, but uh, yeah, so they, they, when you, the facilitator's really job is to just try and keep them talking, keep them engaged and so on, not necessarily to be a, a you know, an expert subject matter expert in any of the particular topics, because we're probably not, right? You know, I mean, if it gets really into the detail, now if you want to talk accounting or tax or things like that, yeah, we can help, but payroll taxes and, um, you know, working with different systems internally, those are better discussions amongst yourselves, you know, so. Yeah, I've been in um, other peer groups where it is, where, um, you know, if you're the forum leader, for example, then for a year, you're, you're preparing the meetings and you know it's quite a time commitment so mm -hmm. i just that's why i ask so i know for sure um if i can do it or not so gotcha um do you uh, kathy there was something in the chat about an agenda or an in-person yeah, yeah, actually what i'm going to do dan is i'm going to because we have them on the website and then someone else asked where to apply so in a minute i'm going to share the website because all that's on there <laughs> you um, want me to share an agenda if you if you have we have an old actually we have an old one from BKD way back that's actually we have a sample on the website as well. Okay. Um, if you have one if handy and you want to share it, that'd be great. Yeah, you just want me to share my screen real quick. Yeah, yeah. Can everyone see that? Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, on, on this one, we, we were meeting on Tuesday, so we got together Monday evening for those that got in, you know, around dinner time, met up for dinner and drinks, um, and, and the group really sets the, the agenda. So, you know, these are some of the topics they wanted to, to spend time on. Um, and then, you know, one of the members was located in Indianapolis, so we took a tour of their their, their facility, and this is a mechanical contractor, so they have like a prefabrication shop, and so all of the other mechanical contractors in that group are pretty interested in that, so that was kind of the focus of that site visit, um, you know, and then the next day, we had group dinner that night, um, and then the next day kind of got together and wrapped up by 1130, so everyone could, uh, you know, get out of there and travel home. That's pretty typical, you know. I think it's pretty consistent. I'm guessing throughout all years, Dan at, at Forbes, and looks pretty consistent with ours. Yeah, it's just the topics are going to be different because those are driven right. by each of the each of the group. Thanks for sharing that, Dan. All right, I will quickly share, although I accidentally closed it over here, um, I will quickly share the website because that's there's lots of good information on there, and this is where um, the application is. So let me turn over to this screen. All right, do we see the peer group page yet? Not yet. Hopefully it's coming up now. All right, do we see the peer group page? Yep. Yep. All right, so you have to go to the CFMA website, make sure you're logged in. If you're not logged in, the secondary menu won't oh. show up. Um, it's it's cfma.org slash peer groups is the site or to get to it, you log in and then under member benefits, it's peer groups. So you can, again, you can't get the secondary menu if you're not logged in. This has a lot of the details that we did talk about. Applications are due uh, by February 10th. You can click right here to apply. There's um, a testimonial from one of our, our peer group members. Um, what to expect has just a lot of the you know again, things to expect. There's some FAQs, so feel free to head through, look them through here. Any questions that you may not have answered. Um, again, the application's also here, so you can click that link or hit it over here. And then there is a sample agenda here as well that when you hit it, will it will download. It'll show up in your downloads. So um, in case you want to revisit a sample agenda. So this is where everything is that you will find on our website about the peer group program. 
I'm going to stop sharing. Oop. All right, let's see what other questions we have. Um, all right, are you grouped with members of the same title or, or are the groups mixed? We try to go by the same title. The, the tricky thing about titles is, well, you know, CFO, controller, you know, are certainly different. It, some companies, depending on size and area and the way they're structured, the title um, doesn't, it, we don't always match by title. We do, again, we, we kind of start with revenue size because we feel that's where you're going to get the, the most um, closely connected peers. And then we do look, but we do, we do try to look, you know, if there's a group of CFOs or a group of controllers or some are mixed. So um, it's a little bit of a mixture. As we start to place you, if you, when we, you know, look for conflicts, you have no conflicts, you're placed in a group. If you get the list, or even if you're a month or two in, you go, I don't think this group's a, fit, a fit, good fit for me, please let me know and we will move you even halfway through the year. You know, we, we like folks to not move so much um, mid-year, but if you're in a group that's just not a fit for you, we can always move you, um, you know, mid-year as well. Um, does a membership run to an individual or company? CFMA's memberships are all individual memberships. So um, every, every membership at CFMA is a individual member. There is no company, so the membership is for you. So if someone else at your company wants to be part of the peer group program, they need to become a CFMA member since this is members only. Um, let's see what other questions. I feel like there's a bunch and I may have missed some as I flip through them. Um, see one question about asking about a number of years of experience. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Um, we do ask that in the application. And again, that's, again, one of the other secondary factors will look if you're newer to the industry or to the role, you know, maybe your depth of knowledge isn't quite as deep, but you have lots and lots to learn. So we do try to, um, you know, we, we'll more likely pair you with a group that's mixed because you get the experiences of everyone. Um, we try not to put, you know, someone who's fairly new in their career into a group of a whole bunch of people who've been around a while. Uh, we try to mix it up that way everyone's learning from everyone. So there's not really, there's not a minimum requirement. And I did just pull the applications, Terry, I see your application. <laughs> so are there any other questions that I've missed or anyone else have questions? Feel free to unmute and ask. Well, all right, if, if you think of any questions, again, you can email Becky or I, if you can't remember you know, our names or our email addresses, we have an email address, it's peergroup at cfma.org. You know, it's easy to remember, no S, it's just one peer group. So it's peergroup at cfma.org. That will go to Becky and I, and we can answer any questions that you have or on the website at cfma.org slash peergroup. There's a link there as well to contact us. So please ask any other questions that you may have. Hopefully you all, you know, I think the program is a great fit for you and I look forward to placing you all in groups in a few months. So thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.